Welcome ladies and gents, Chris Andre here. You can find me at BetBoxing on Twitter. Of course, you can subscribe to the channel. I will be bringing the detailed technical breakdown and prediction video for Chris Eubank Jr.'s fight against Conor Ben. It will come out either late tonight or early tomorrow. So please bear with me. But in the meantime, the sport has been littered with more controversy. The Daily Mail today broke a news story that Conor Ben was found to have an adverse finding in his drug test. They found the substance clomiphene in his blood. We'll talk about this. We'll talk about what this might mean. As you know, we look for all the possible angles here, more angles than a Sonny Edwards fight. So we are trying to play the defense and the prosecution, looking at both sides of the argument, and we're going to let you guys, the audience, be the jury, and you can decide what this all means. So what does this mean, and what does this drug do? Well, before we get to that... Matchroom put out a statement to say we have been made aware that a random anti-doping test for Conor Ben conducted by the Voluntary Anti-Doping Association, so VADA, returned an adverse analytical finding for trace amounts of a fertility drug. The B sample has yet to be tested, meaning that no rule violation has been confirmed. Indeed, Mr. Ben has not been charged with any rule violation. He is not suspended and he remains free to fight. Mr. Ben has since passed a doping control test conducted by UCAD, the anti-doping authority to which the British Board of Boxing Control has delegated its doping control testing for the bout. Mr. Ben has passed all doping control tests conducted by UCAD. Both fighters have taken medical and legal advice, are aware of all the relevant information and wish to proceed with the bout this Saturday. So the fight will go ahead. Now, a lot of people have given their opinions on what this all means. This particular person on Twitter, for instance, the chief says you'll hear a lot of misinformation. Clomid, is, which is the brand name for clomiphene, is used after a steroid cycle to get testosterone levels back to normal and to help prevent rebound gyno. This not only helps with performance, but it helps mask previous steroid use. Low testosterone in an elite muscular athlete is an obvious sign of steroid use. They'll call it a fertility drug in the same way that tamoxifen is a breast cancer drug. Absolutely irrelevant. They are SERMs and are used for post-cycle purposes. SERMs, by the way, are selective estrogen receptor modulators. Trace amounts means nothing. The the clomid metabolites and the compound itself have a 10 to 20 day half-life. This makes it somewhat of a paradox for drugs cheats. The small clearing amount makes it hard to catch in a test, but it also means you're risking failing a drugs test for two to three weeks after use. Now, this whole thing and that accusation has shades of Bob Arum's insinuations regarding Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather's fight. Bob Arum was suspicious about the numbers of Floyd Mayweather when he was having random drugs testing and going to fight Manny Pacquiao. That was to do with the ratio between testosterone and epitestosterone. And basically, he came out and said that he was less concerned about the IV drip, which at the time had attracted a lot of controversy. And he was more concerned about the points in Hauser's article where he had Mayweather tested and he came up with 0.6 and 0.8 in the ratio for testosterone and epitestosterone. Aram said, I'm an old man and my ratio is one and a half to two. Mayweather's ratio as an athlete should be between two and three. For him to test less than one, something is wrong. What could be wrong is there's a cream that you take to get the ratio down, which is an epitestosterone cream, which you can't really regulate it if you rub it in and you can lose control of the ratio. If a doctor saw a ratio in a young male athlete like 0.6 and 0.8, he should send them right to the hospital. That's, in my mind, virtually impossible. I'm not a doctor, but it sounds incredible. And he was basically explaining how he's an 83-year-old man. Floyd's a 38-year-old elite athlete. In other words, he was implying that there was some sort of masking agent going on. Or could Floyd, according to what Aram's insinuating, have been taking something that lowered his testosterone, which then required him to raise it. Maybe he raised it too much and needed to lower it again. Again, I'm not making these accusations. I'm relaying what Bob Arum was saying. But let's consider this, therefore, and not just consider the hearsay. Clomid can significantly improve fertility for men with low sperm counts caused by low testosterone levels. It increases FSH production, increasing sperm production and LH testosterone production, leading to better sperm production and function. Taking Clomid is one of the many ways men can boost their fertility. This is why the matchroom statement referred to it as a fertility drug. Now, there are various articles online, bodybuilding articles, where they are essentially advising people on how they can use Clomid. Here, this particular article explains Clomid blocks the estrogen receptors 
receptors of the body, preventing them from binding to estrogen. It is used to prevent side effects such as gynecomastia, which is basically moobs, after anabolic steroid cycle. It also stimulates natural testosterone production. So what the insinuation is here is that after you take a steroid, you can then take this particular substance to help rebalance you. And there are various studies published in the National Library of Medicine which address this issue. In the first one here, published in 2019, you can see management of anabolic steroid-induced infertility. In the second one, you can see clomiphene citrate is effective in restoring testosterone in hypogonadism. Hypogonadism is basically a diminished functioning of the gonads, the testes, where you're not producing enough sex hormone. So that is a potential treatment there for something like that, but there does seem to be a very strong link as well to using this for balancing you out post use of anabolic steroids. And to many people, this seems to be proof online that Conaben is up to no good. Now, you know, on this channel, as I always say, we always play the defense and the prosecution and we let you guys be the jury. So is there another possible explanation that you might also want to consider? Well, over the last couple of years, you guys are fully aware that the world has been brought to a standstill. And there was a prophylactic that was rolled out all over the world. Now, I'm not going to mention any specific keywords here because of algorithms on YouTube and things like that. You guys can look at the screen. You can use your imagination. I'm sure you can figure out what it is we're talking about here. But that particular supposed prophylactic has been linked to a negative effect of sperm count for a period of time, up to five months after the usage of this. This is shown in various studies and also coincides with birth rates globally, not just in one place, but globally. Is it possible that Conor Ben, who actually helped promote this product, he helped sell it to the masses, so you know that he took it. Is it possible that Conor Ben is simply suffering a side effect of something like that? Has he taken something else and was struggling to produce enough sex hormone to be able to have children effectively and as a result of that he went on to speak to his doctor who advised him to take something like this he's not going to make that public so that's a possibility however if that is the case why didn't Conor Ben as far as we know tell UCAD or VADA and get a medical exemption if they would have given him one you have to basically announce these sorts of things you can't just take them secretly so this is a problem, something that Conor Ben would have to address. Now, No Smoke Boxing, terrific boxing page, by the way, they reported that earlier in the week on Monday, Chris Eubanks Sr. had been admitted into a mental health hospital under Section 137. He has since been released, and he was apparently released in order to attend his son's fight. But the point is, this guy is going through hell at the moment. Clearly, he's lost a son in Sebastian, and despite the public persona, he seems to be going through an awful lot of difficulties. He's concerned, he says about the well-being of his son regarding the rehydration clause, and now he's gonna come across this. This is only gonna to add to the stress levels. So the fact that this fight's going ahead, I can't imagine it being particularly a great thing for Chris Eubank Sr.'s mental health. If I'm Chris Eubank Jr., at the very least, I am demanding that they eradicate the rehydration clause. They would have to back out from that, surely. You want me to come in at 157, 158? Okay, but you're not then going to stop me from rehydrating fully and coming into the ring at 100%, which is in itself dangerous. We've spoken about this in the past and how the cerebral spinal fluids are diminished and it takes a certain period of time to replenish them. And that leaves you at significantly increased chance of suffering a serious injury following head trauma. It increases the chances quite significantly. We've covered this in previous videos. At the very least, Chris Eubank Jr. needs to come in 100% therefore going into a fight of this magnitude. Let me know what you think, ladies and gents, about all the things we've spoken about here today. What's your take on everything? I've tried to provide you guys with all the relevant angles, more angles than a Sonny Edwards fight, and it's down to you guys to tell me how you interpret this particular issue. Don't forget to hit a stiff jab on the like button, a right cross on the subscribe button and an uppercut on the notifications button and stay tuned. Over the next day or two, you'll be getting the detailed technical breakdown and prediction for the fight. Thanks for watching, chat to you soon. Take care, God bless.